Hi guys, welcome to another Bootstrap 4 video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignerTechTips.com. Well, we're going to continue on with our Bootstrap Basics theme here today. We created this website and we've done the nav bar and just a little bit of background stuff. Today, what we're going to do is check that this is fully responsive and it's going to work on all devices. Now, I'm using Google Chrome here and I use it because I like the inspector tools if I hit F12 it'll bring up the inspector console if I just unclick on that here's our console and over to the left hand side there's a toggle which will toggle between responsive and regular views and yours might be in a different place you can change the place of your inspector by hitting these three dots here and tell it to dock on the side up bottom right wherever you want it I've got mine on the bottom obviously so if we hit this little responsive device toggler and that's on an iPhone X let's just take it let's make it fully responsive so we can drag it and start off where we where we are this is what we've got basically at the moment. Now if we shrink this down, we want to make sure it does what we want it to do on all devices. It's okay, but there's a little shrinkage just before it gets to responsive. What we could do, we could move this across a little bit to free up a bit of real estate on the other end that's pretty much fine don't like it dropping down there I'd rather this was on the left and this was on the right and that's pretty much the smallest of the phones right there if we check it out let's put it on iPad it's okay but again I'd like that to be on the left to look look more sort of aesthetically pleasing but of course it's beauties in the eye of the beholder so you do it however you want let's have a look at an iPhone 10 that's okay but again that's not really central and I'd like to see that up on the same I'd like to have this on the left and our little hamburger menu here let's click on our hamburger menu okay everything's okay there the only thing I would like to see is a little bit of space between these two buttons so just a few issues we need to correct with some media queries here and what media queries are if I just toggle this back off again they're CSS code that tells it at a certain screen size if a certain screen's got a maximum width of X then we want something to happen when it gets smaller than that we'll use a media query to override our custom styles so let's have a look see what we actually want to do if I put this back on I'll put it on responsive again I'm going to drag this up so really just before it breaks into the hamburger oh, fairly high about there that's fine let's say well, let's make it 1140 put 1140 pixels and at 1140 let's make this navbar brand here have less of a margin on the left hand side so if I right click and inspect that here's our navbar brand And it's got a margin left of 100 pixels. What if we take that down to sort of 10 pixels? Yeah, that gives it a lot more working room when it gets to this size. Yeah, that's going to work fine. And then when we squish down, does it look like an iPhone? Probably just like that. Yeah, got those both on the same level there. That's fine. What about an iPad? Yeah, that's fine too it back to responsive so I think we said 1140 
is we want to cut that now for that logo margin on the left hand side down to 10 picks so let's do that so I'm going to copy navbar brand and margin left 10 picks and 1140 was the number we had up there I seem to remember is when we want it to actually change 1140 so what we're going to do is we'll open our brackets if you've not got a text editor brackets is a free text editor you can download it from a link below this video like I say it's absolutely free and has some great features but you can follow along with any text editor you like but if you need one there's the link below okay so we're still under navbar decoration so I'm gonna put our media queries under this title still because we're still dealing with the navbar here now to start our media query off we have to say at media and as usual I'll put this CSS down below this video so don't bother copying what I'm writing on the screen unless you want to um, you're welcome to use it from below the video so we can say media only screen and we're going to say and and open some round brackets here and in there we're going to say max width so if a screen has a max width I'm talking and typing make sure I spell it right max width of colon 1140 pixels open and close some curly brackets we want something to happen actually that let's get rid of those oh the curly brackets need to be outside your round brackets there so do that again so that's saying that when a screen has got a max width of 1140 whatever's in between these curly brackets right there is what we want to happen so let's just paste in what we had navbar brand margin left 10 picks and we need to put a closing curly after that because you'll notice with media queries it's got its own set of curly brackets and then within it you've got your actual CSS command that's got its own set of curly brackets so with media queries you always want to make sure you've got two brackets to end if you haven't you're missing one <laughs> all right so let's save that control s let's go back to our site and let's take it up above 1140 let's reload now when I slide this back down below 1140 you should see that jump over to the left hand side there we are it's over there now there we are. I see it jump just as we get 1185 65 55 boom and it jumps over there so that's that media query taking effect there so that's great that's doing that a little bit and the only other thing that I was worried about I think was the menu right here I wanted a little gap or a bit more of a gap between those buttons there let's take this up a bit in size so you can see it there's no gap between those buttons so if we inspect those buttons those are in our margin right section uh, so MRT was our little class for that margin right section and it was the A tag so we want to do another responsive media query not not at 1140 we don't need it at 1140 because it'll add padding to our nav bar but as soon as that hamburger menu comes in right there which is basically 991 I think it stops at let's have a look 991 that should be regular menu no There we go, 992. So 991 is where we actually want to apply that. So let's make sure 991, that should be our hamburger menu if I change that again. Yeah. So at 991, we want to put a bit of padding between these two. Like I say, MRTA. 
and we'll give him well, actually not padding because it's, it's a button that will just make him fatter we need to put a margin top and bottom say of 10 picks so it's got 20 picks clearance in between so let's go ahead and do that let's go back to our custom CSS I'm gonna copy this over right here paste it below and we said for this one 991 wasn't it 991 pixels don't want the navbar brand but what we want is the MRTA that's it right there so I'm going to copy that put that inside there so we've got our MRTA got opening curly and closing curly that's great so now I just need to add what we actually want to put in there, which is, we'll say margin top. Let's take that back a bit. Margin dash top, we'll say 10 pixels. And margin bottom, we want 10 pixels as well, semicolon. there we go let's just take that back just a little bit save that control s got our two curlies at the end so we know we're doing okay with our media query let's go back to our site now when i refresh hopefully there should be a little bit more space between those two we open it up there we go that's okay that's fine you can make it more or less however you like it or you can actually take all that off there so they all look the same however you want to do it but I'm happy to leave those little buttons there like that so that's pretty much exactly how I want it let's just double check it on the phone yeah that's fine that's fine and what about the iPad both of those are fine fantastic so we've done our media queries here the only other thing I did notice here now we don't have to do this with a media query if I just take this back off you now we made these menu items here have that little line under them when we hover on them I've noticed it does it <laughs> to our navbar brand too and we don't really want that if you want that that's fine leave it if you don't let's just make that border transparent so you can't actually see it when when you hover over it very easy to do and let's just see why that's happening in the first place it's because it's part of this class that we've done it's it's an a tag within this class so look at our HTML a minute and see explain exactly why that's happening okay we've got my nav which we called the whole class for the nav bar there and we were targeting the, these a class within this my nav section if we look at the custom CSS my nav there it is my nav a hover border bottom two pick solid if we look at that well our nav bar brands also within that class and it's also an anchor tag so that's why it's happening to that but what we can do is we can say navbar brand and give it a border bot on hover, give it a border bottom of transparent. We may have to give that the important class to overwrite the one that we got going on here. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm just going to grab this bit right here already got a bit of navbar brand I'm gonna put this slightly higher up I want it before our media queries so we're gonna say navbar brand and we want it in the hover mo mode so it's navbar brand no space colon and the word hover remember to put no space between the end of the D on brand and the colon and no space between the colon on the hover it won't work and what do we want we want a border bottom two picks solid transparent so it's still there the real estate's still there but you just can't see it which will work fine so let's just put that in there now we may have to add that important class we'll see let's just try it control s to save and refresh this yeah 
it's still appearing when we hover over there so if we go back let's put our important class after that and that should override it like I said before you don't really want to put that important anywhere that you don't need it but I think we need it in this case so let's try that control s to save back to the site refresh yeah now when I hover over it no line when I hover over on these they still got that line great so there's our media queries done for our little nav bar I hope you found that useful if you have please give it a thumbs up share comment and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you're interested in web development take a look down below we've got some great free courses down there as well as some premium courses with some huge discounts for our YouTube subscribers so do check it out once again this has been Jamie with System22 and WebDesignTechTips.com Thanks for watching. Have a great day.